one of the hurdles that virtual reality developers will have to overcome in the next couple of years is the problem of locomotion. That is, how can someone in VR explore a virtual environment that's larger than their physical space? You'll stand right where that white tape is. It's a challenge that the virtual reality researchers at USC's Institute for Creative Technologies has been tackling for years. Their solution? A redirected walking algorithm that tricks your brain into thinking you're traveling back and forth in a large space. So you don't see it, but you'll end up walking in a, in a space that's about the size of an apartment living room. We recently visited ICT's Mix Reality Lab to get a demo of this redirected walking software, and it was very compelling. Virtually, I started at the end of the hallway, which was, you know, it's maybe 20, 25 feet mm -hmm. in that direction. And if I take off the headset, I would assume that I'm looking at where I started walking, but I'm taking off the headset and I actually started there. Yeah, yeah. And it warped around. Yeah, and you're just walking in this small space. In a circle. In a circle. So can you explain how that, how that worked? Well, what we do is um, every time you turn your, your back and turn around to face a new door, yes. we actually rotate the world slightly faster than you're turning, but just enough so that you don't notice. So it's not uncomfortable. Yeah, so it's not uncomfortable. If we do it too much, you will notice it and you might actually feel nauseous. Mm. Uh, but if we do it just right, you know, you're completely fooled into thinking you're walking. Uh, let's say you're designing a game mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you design the game so that you, you spread out all the objectives, all the points of interest uh, the way you want to. We want you as a designer, a game developer, to actually set the uh, redirected walking parameters yourself. So if you want it to trick you a lot or to trick you a little, you can change that using our um, mm. redirect walking toolkit, which works with the Unity game engine. So you can just drop, just drop it in, and if you were to build your own virtual reality, let's say first-person shooter, and you want people to be able to run around in their apartment without running into walls, well, you can custom tailor the toolkit to your game. Another interesting part of this demo was its use of light field imaging. The stop motion animated models I was interacting with in the virtual space weren't your typical textured polygons. They were light field models that looked incredibly detailed up close. With light fields, we're literally just shoving pixels from the photographs to your eyes. There's no reconstruction, so we're not painting the pixels onto polygons. We're just, you know, based on where you're looking inside this virtual world, we pick and choose the uh, correct pixels to show to your eyes. And it's doing it in real time, and it's doing it at uh, 75 hertz for the Oculus Rift, so that, you know, it's smooth. You know, when you turn your head or when you turn the model, you're actually looking at all those computations in real time. And because you're taking 360 degree, uh, 360 images to generate the light field, um, you avoided the occlusion problems. So I can see behind, and there's no holes in, in the model. Yeah. Point. We shot in front of a green screen, and we used special software to sort of key out the green so that you can see through the fabric. Some of these puppets, actually, you can actually reach out and uh, we're using Elite Motion on the front mm -hmm. to see your hand. So some of these puppets actually respond to your, your hand gestures. Um, and what's interesting is that the hand here is polygonal. But your hands, the, yeah, from the Leap Motion, yeah. they put polygons on it, but that peacock, not polygons. Right, but they can interact. I get to walk around it as if it was a real... As uh, if as it's if a, a real three. object, yeah. Oh, and if you curl your fingers, Oh, he'll, he'll scale. Shrink. Yeah, he'll shrink small. So it's like really wild to see him in between your fingertips. The ultimate light field would have millions of lighting points. You notice this, uh, this clay model has only one lighting point. You mm -hmm. know, he, he, the, the, the key light was probably behind him and there's like some sort of, there's an additional light in front. So maybe only two light sources. But in the future, you could have a million light sources and your computer program just picks and chooses the appropriate light source without polygons, you just shove pixels to the display. 